welcome to this short discussion of the Wiregrass Under COVID-19 Documentation Project of the Wiregrass Archives at Troy University Dothan Campus. Let me get, begin by introducing myself. I'm Dr. Marty Olaf, Director of the Wiregrass Archives and a Professor of History at Troy University Dothan Campus. You see my mailing address here, and the easiest way to get in touch with me is via email at m-o-l-l-i-f-f at troy.edu. On the final slide of this presentation, you'll see the Wiregrass Archives homepage URL, my email address again, and a QR code that will take you to the home page if you shoot it with your mobile device. What is the project itself and why is it important? Well, the Wiregrass Archives will collect materials that document the lives of community members in southeast Alabama, southwest Georgia, and northwest Florida, which you can see on this map. Spring 2020 is a historic era and the lives of the people are just as historically important as the actions of governments and institutions. The changing nature and interests of the historical profession, now concentrating on social and cultural history rather than just political activity, plus the growth of archives as well as easy to use recording media, gives us a great opportunity to capture what life itself was like under COVID-19's regime. Let's talk about what kinds of materials people can produce that this project will accept. First of all, paper-based diaries, journals, and memoirs are the original concept for this thing. Digital analogs of uh, such diaries, journals, and memoirs are fine also. The original plan was built around the idea of class assignments where the teacher didn't have a, a place to put the product that students turned in. But other people have offered other things. In one case, a multi-party YouTube diary has been offered from a Troy professor and his friends. One teacher offered lesson plans in transitioning to an online synchronous teaching environment. Someone else offered me a 13 friend text string that talked about life from day to day as these 13 friends were experiencing it. One other professor offered two classes of WhatsApp discussions that she was offering for extra credit and Email memoirs have come in, descriptions of life under COVID so far. So you can see we have a wide variety of types of things that we accept and encourage. Let's look now at how you can participate in this project. But first, let me discuss what an archives is. Well, first of all, an archives is a repository of records, manuscripts, and similar documentation of human activity. These records become the grist for the mill of historical research. The word archives also refers to the staff that run such a repository. Finally, the word archives refers to a body of records produced by an individual or a corporate creator. Think about the Wiregrass Archives at the Dothan campus of Troy University. It's a division of the Troy University Dothan campus library. Our mission is to document Troy University Dothan campus, the Wiregrass region's community, and to coordinate information about available research collections. Our collecting policy states that we identify, preserve, and make available records and manuscripts from the mighty and the mundane, individuals and institutions, governmental bodies and NGOs in our 30 county service area. Our history began in 1999 
with the promise of the congressional papers of Representative Terry Everett of Alabama's second congressional district. He served from 1993 to 2009, and the archives officially opened in 2002. Our collections range in size from 170 cubic feet to one digital photograph. In addition to Mr. Everett's papers, we have governmental records, state agency records, local organizational records, for example, those of Landmark Park and the National Peanut Festival and a number of women's clubs. And we have all kinds of personal papers, diaries, masses of correspondence, large numbers of photographs, memoirs, maps, and on and on. You can find out more about the Wiregrass Archives and see some of our collections by pointing your browser at our home page available from the www.troy.edu webpage. And you can see that whole URL beneath the home page image on this slide. Of course, like I said earlier, on the last slide, there will be more contact information as well as a QR code that you can get to our web page directly from. Participate in the COVID-19 documentation project. You should have a product that is a hard copy or a digital uh, product that you want to contribute. We ask you to donate this product to the Wiregrass archives. That is to give it to the archives, including legal title and copyright. In exchange, the Wiregrass Archives will maintain your contribution in perpetuity and will immediately provide you with an unlimited right of reprint to your own words. We ask that you donate this so that we can make your contribution available to researchers, but your unlimited right of reprint means you can do whatever you want with your own words. You can write them into a memoir later on. You can post them online. You can do anything you want to with them, and we will not interfere with that. This is really a mutual non-aggression pact. We can make your words available to other researchers. You can use your words. We won't interfere with each other. We do this through a gift agreement which is a contract right here. I'm showing you the entirety of the gift agreement for this project. Here is the codicil about your unlimited right of reprint. I ask you to complete this form, though I might describe your donation for you in the description of materials area. Then sign and date it and return it to me. I will countersign and return a copy of it to you for your records. Finally, let me address what happens with your donation. Normally, an archives arranges donations under the creator's name, but because your donation is a component of a larger project that the archives itself is creating, we will arrange your materials under that collection name. However, your name will be an index item that allows people to find your material. So we'll also ask you for some biographical information to enhance access and understanding. Eventually, the project will appear as a finding aid, a description and an inventory, that is, posted to the Wiregrass Archives website. Where we have permissions, we will link the indexing terms from that finding aid to the materials. That's to say, if you give us permission to post your materials online, we will create a link to your materials. We will also add some indexing metadata to your materials so they can be found independently through a regular Google search. I hope you and yours have done well in this pandemic. Before we end, note that you can get more information about the Wiregrass Under COVID-19 documentation project through these points of contact. The URL for the Wiregrass archives that appears on this slide and my email address. This QR code available here 
points to the Wiregrass Archives homepage. Please pause the recording at this moment and shoot this code with a mobile device for access. Thank you for your attention.